circling from that. What is your take getting persons out there um, throwing out terms such as um, minimum wage or livable wage? What is your take on it? Either one of you. See, I think minimum wage is difficult because if you have a small business and you and you legally mandate that that business has to pay people at a minimum level, then that small business owner may go out of business, mm -hmm. right? So it becomes an unfair imposition on that person. All right, you got people that are running small businesses that will kind of hire a guy to just do little odds and ends around his business. But if he had to be responsible, say, for all of his benefits and a pension and this and other, then he wouldn't be able to do that. Yet that little guy depends on that. Now, it's not a livable wage or it's not minimum wage, but I think the real question is livable wage. How do we ensure that when people are prepared to work a full day's work, that they're able to sustain themselves so, for example, my concern is more with the government worker who has to work on a till at Marketplace or pack bags at Marketplace after work. It means the government isn't paying them enough a livable wage. See now, if the government paid them a livable wage, then the person, that job would be open for somebody who couldn't get a government job to go down to marketplace and put in that time to do that. But you have people working two and three jobs to make ends meet, right? These are the people that were asked to take a furlough day and a pay cut, right? Yeah. So someone else is sharing all the profit and they're carrying all the load. And I'm saying that there's something wrong with that equation. For, for many it's entirely wrong because what we have in Bermuda is that um, you know, many people try to run from it, but the reality is that we have a minimum of at least two different Bermudas mm -hmm. based on race. It starts to even diverge from there where we're getting three and four Bermudas based not solely on race, but economic class because you have many blacks, Bermudians who are now economically successful. So, are they poor? No. They have many whites who are just making ends meet. So, often people, although we have a, a situation where we're divided initially by race, it's transitioning, or morphing, I should say, into divided by class as well. So, there are those persons who are in the quote-unquote black community who your message wouldn't resonate with because they are now part of the elite. And there are those in the white community who your message resonates to because they are part of the working stiffs. So I think at times, um, a lot of times, although we really do need to address the race issue, a lot of times issues get muddied in the water based solely on race when it's based on hey that white guy over there is about to lose his house too or that black guy over there has got money for the next five so, so generations often we we mischaracterize the issue of race by reducing it to individual personal interactions Bermudians have always got along with people of different ethnic backgrounds growing up. Mm -hmm. Now there are some whites that were part of an elite white oligarchy that didn't want, but even their children would sneak down the road and play with the little black kids down on North Shore and stuff like that, right? So the issue is an individual. So when people talk about race, they say, oh well, you, you don't like me, you don't love, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. Corner West coins a phrase where he says, you know, the circumstances under which certain white people are niggerfied. Niggerfied. Right? That means that poor white people are niggerfied to the extent that a system which uses race to disempower certain groups of people includes, makes them honorary members of that group of people. In other words, they get treated similarly. 
Yeah. Now the problem is that on an individual basis, sometimes whites, out of their inability to understand systems of power, blame the black person for their conditions instead of understanding that it's systemic and structural. Now if white people can be niggerfied, then some black people can be whitified. So then when black folk get whitified, then it means that they automatically become kind of honor, honorary members of the oligarchy. In other words, they may be bag carriers for the 40 thieves. So they become this new class of people. So they now buy into that ideology and they begin to look at their own community the same way that the, that the system used to look at all of us. Right, and the real issue is systemic. And what we've got to begin to understand is how race permeates a system in terms of disempowering certain groups of people and keeping certain groups of people in certain places. And when we begin to understand that the problem is systemic, we've got to then have the difficult conversation of how do we change systems of power. And I, ideally, where would, what would you see as the, I wouldn't say ideal, but a better system than what we have now? Again, I think you, you cannot talk about justice and equality without talking about how wealth is distributed. So, one analogy that I use is if we have a cake that has 10 pieces, we cut it into 10 pieces. If I take eight pieces and then I have eight people have to share two pieces, it really doesn't matter how they divide those two pieces. We shouldn't be surprised to learn that eight people sharing two pieces is not enough, right? In a similar way, if we go into any nursery school on this island and I have 10 blocks and one kid takes eight blocks and all the other kids have to figure out how they're going to share two blocks, a good nursery school teacher is going to go over to that kid and say, you know what, little Jimmy or little Joey or whatever the name, kid's name is, little Mary, you have to share some of these eight blocks with these other people because they don't have enough to go around. 